All right, so today we're going to be solving a problem that's been driving me nuts. So I have all these tools with these small dust collection ports, but the problem is that my dust collection hose and shop vac hoses, they don't fit. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to go step by step through what I do to take an idea, in this case an adapter for dust collection, draw it in CAD and then 3D print it. This is a great application for a 3D printer in the shop, and I think you're really gonna dig this one. We're gonna walk through this step by step so you understand all the processes that I use to convert my ideas into physical 3D printed projects. So the first thing we're gonna measure is the dust port on the tool. Now I'm gonna check it from a couple different sides just to make sure that we get the right dimension. A lot of these plastic parts are oval shaped. So for in this case, I'm gonna go with 1.410. Now, of course, I need to measure the dust hose. So we'll measure the outside diameter of this. Again, from a couple different sides. I'm gonna go with 2.27 inches. We also have this locking tab right here. I'm gonna measure the width of that. It is 0.75 inches. And then the distance from the end which looks to be about 0.75 inches as well. All right, now that we have our dimensions written down, we can head down to the lab and start drawing everything in CAD. All right, so I have Fusion 360 open in a new part. And the first thing we're gonna do is head over to modify and then change parameters. We're gonna add a couple custom user parameters so that we can reference these later on as we wanna change the dimensions that we're using for the dust collection port or even the dust hose. So for the tool diameter, I'll type in 1.410. That was the outer diameter of the tool that we measured. Then I'll add another parameter. We'll call this hose diameter, and this will be 2.270. All right, now the next step is to start sketching. So we'll create a new sketch on the front plane and then I'll sketch a couple lines just to get the overall shape that I'm looking for. And we can add dimensions later on. So the sketch that I'm making is a side profile. This will be a revolved feature, like if you turn this part on a lathe. To make sure that Fusion 360 understands that that's what we're trying to do, we can right click on this middle line here and set that to a normal center line. And now when we add a new dimension by clicking D on the keyboard, we can click on these lines, and for this first diameter, we'll use the tool diameter. You'll see that Fusion 360 automatically populates that user parameter that we created earlier. We'll do the same on the hose end of this adapter. And I'll just fill out the other dimensions that I know I want. Now that I have my sketch done, I can run a revolve feature which will automatically grab that sketch and then revolve it. I'll hit OK. And then I want to shell this part in order to make it a thin-walled part. Now I'll shell it to the outside, and this is a great way to model parts that you know will be hollow in the first place, and you only have the interior dimensions. Now this part is almost done. All I want to do is add a little notch to catch that tab for the hose. And then now that I have that sketch done for the notch, we can then cut a hole in the side of our dust collection adapter. And that's the part. This should fit the tool and the hose perfectly. But in case it doesn't, all we have to do to adjust it is go up to modify, change parameters, and then let's say the tool diameter is too tight. It doesn't fit very well on the part. And we, we can increase that number to any number we want let's say 1.5 inches. As soon as we hit enter, it will change the part automatically. This is a really useful feature if you're trying to reuse the same model for multiple dust collection ports, but then I just change the tool diameter to 1.5 inches or maybe two inches. Maybe it's a very small tool and it's only a one inch port like on my biscuit joiner. So I've got the model loaded up into my slicing software. A slicing software is nothing more than the program that takes the 3D model and then converts it into a language or a toolpath that the 3D printer can understand. 
Don't get too overwhelmed by all the settings and adjustments and calibration features that your printer or even the slicing software that you have offers. To start, I recommend just keeping all the default settings that your printer came with and then using all the default material profiles built into your slicer. In my case, I'm just going to use the generic PLA setting because that's the plastic I'm going to use. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out to the printer and start printing. about five hours to print so now it's tomorrow hence the new shirt and we're out here in the shop now and let's see how this fits all right so the moment of truth let's see how that fits on the tool perfect fit nice and snug won't fall off on accident and then we'll try the hose the hose is a little bit tight but that's okay, because we made this model parametric, which means all we have to do is change the dimension for this inner diameter and then print the part again. Okay, so I've gone ahead and printed the part again, and still, because we kept this dimension the same, it fits great on the tool, and then it fits way better on the hose. Now, the thing I don't like is it doesn't feed into the hose very far. That's okay, because I went ahead and printed a third version Again, fit it under there, but it also now fits much easier onto the hose and will lock in on that tab. And now it can lock in under the tool and we have great dust collection even on a belt sander or really any other small tool. So now that you know how to design and 3D print your own tools and parts for the shop, the next thing you need to do is check out this video right up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.